This week, we are talking about a topic that everybody I know loves to talk about, and that's cybersecurity. And the reason for that is the Coast Guard has just released some guidance to help facilities here in the United States to take a look at their compliance for facility security plans when it comes to cybersecurity. The reason we continue to talk about cybersecurity and cybersecurity related issues, and I know people are tired of it, but the number of attacks against vessels, against maritime facilities, businesses, port facilities globally continues to go up at an alarming rate. In fact, some experts believe that cybersecurity attacks against maritime related assets has gone up over 900% just in the last few years. In fact, just as fast past January, we saw an attack against DNV, the class society, on their ship manager program, which completely took the program offline. We're going to continue, in our opinion, to see these attacks for the foreseeable future until maritime transportation infrastructure is much more resilient. Maritime is, is fairly far behind when you take a look at cybersecurity practices that are in place um, for financial institutions, for healthcare, for other businesses. So there's a lot of work that we have to do in the maritime industry. As you know, the IMO put out guidance for IMO. IMO 2021, which was compliance for vessels to have cybersecurity integrated into their ISM or their International Safety Management Plan. The Coast Guard took that one step further with NAVIC 0120, which also included facilities. Now, the due date for vessels was back from January 1st of 2021 moving forward. So based on when the vessel's annual inspection was taking place, that's when compliance needed to happen for the vessels on their ISM plans. Here in the United States with NAVIC 0120, that compliance was back on October 1st of 2022. So there's a number of facilities that are still working to get within that compliance because that just realistically started on October 1st. So with that, the Coast Guard has put out a guide. Now, this is just a guide. It's not policy like the NAVIC, but a guide to help facilities. And I think in some cases, potentially, there's parts of this that could also apply to help vessels to improve their cybersecurity. So this uh, document is called the Maritime Cybersecurity Assessment and Annex Guide, or the MCAAG, or what we're all probably going to call the MCAG. Now, this, like I said, is a guide really to help facilities come into compliance with NAVIC 0120 for their facility security plans. If you take a look at this particular guide, it very much mirrors the guidance that the IMO referenced, which was the NIST standard. So within the Coast Guard document, it talks about doing a risk assessment, IDing where your vulnerabilities are, securing those, um, measuring how secure you are and making revisions to that, which is very, very close to the NIST standards, which was to identify, protect, detect, respond, and recover. So the standards very much mirror each other. But again, this is not a policy guidance from the Coast Guard. This is more of a reference document to help facilities. Facilities in the United States are free to use any guidance that they deem would be helpful to provide cybersecurity information as part of the uh, facility security plan. If you guys have questions about that, reach out to us. We have experts that work here internally uh, within Dryad Global that provide not only cybersecurity expertise, but expertise when it comes to facility and vessel security plans, not only for MTSA compliance here in the United States, uh, but ISPS compliance globally. So we have a great uh, group of experts that work here internally with our clients to make Make sure that your uh, facility or vessel security plans are within compliance of your particular flag state um, and also the MTSA for here in the United States. And it's a, it's a really interesting uh, expertise that's needed, especially when you look at the integration of cybersecurity um, into whether it's your ISF M plan um, or your, uh, your MTSA plan. So don't hesitate to, to reach out to us. This job aid is pretty useful. If you kind of look at the, at the table of contents, there's a number of things that mirror other guidance that's been put out uh, globally about being able to conduct risk, ass risk assessments, to identify someone who is your so-called cybersecurity officer, and a number of other pieces that the Coast Guard has identified. The one thing that we always recommend to our clients, and we actually give our clients a copy of this, is to actually 
actually download the Coast Guard's job aid. I was in the Coast Guard for eight years. We used job aids for everything, which were basically checklists to help us as we would go through different parts of our job for inspections or boat operations, law enforcement operations. The Coast Guard has done a great job of building job aids for everything for inspections when it comes to facilities and vessels here in the United States specifically, the Coast Guard has a job aid that's available online so you can see exactly how the Coast Guard goes through their inspections. That's a great tool to have in your arsenal to be able to use whether you're a vessel or a facility when it comes to inspections. And this would also be true for port state control. The Coast Guard has a job aid for that. Um, some of that is public. A lot of that um, for the port state control um, is a little bit more difficult to get. But if you can, these job aids are extremely helpful for you to be able to use when it comes to putting your plans together. The Coast Guard as a whole uh, is still working to bring experts into the Coast Guard within their cyber command and within each one of the captain of the port commands to really help when it comes to cybersecurity. The Coast Guard, not, and I'm not saying this just because I spent eight years in the Coast Guard and it was great, but the Coast Guard has really done a good job um, in their various captain of the port zones of reaching out to industry when it comes to cybersecurity expertise, working with industry stakeholders and the maritime transportation systems when it came to putting this guide together, but also on a day-to-day -day basis. One of the things that we do working with our clients is stay in direct communication with all of the different captain of the port zones that we happen to work with. The, the captain of the port uh, folks are very good at helping facilities when it comes to questions. We've always been very transparent when we've had issues or problems or questions and reach out and have a great dialogue with the Coast Guard. So when there is an issue, we don't have a major violation or problem. The Coast Guard will really do a good job of keeping in communication with you. So you can reach out to these guys in your local captain of the port zone is what we'd recommend when it comes to questions, not only about cyber, but just in general about your facility um, or vessel security plans. They do a great job of following up with that.